Hi, welcome to another video. So, Google has just launched Gemini 3.0 Flash. If you follow the space, you know that things are moving incredibly fast. I actually did a breakdown of this model recently, and the results were, well, interesting. To catch you up, Gemini 3.0 Flash is basically the budget-friendly, high-speed cousin of the 3.0 Pro model. We are talking about 30 cents per million input tokens. That is aggressively cheap. It is designed for low latency and high throughput. Now, in my initial benchmarks, it was a bit of a mixed bag. I threw the standard chess autoplay and Minecraft clone tests at it. And to be honest, it kind of bombed them. It struggles with long-chain complex logic requiring perfect state management. It's not really built for that. However, there was one area where it surprisingly held its ground, and in some cases, even outperformed the bigger models. Visuals. The SVG generation, the 3JS objects, the way it handles spatial reasoning for UI elements. It is surprisingly competent. And that got me thinking. We have this model that is incredibly fast, almost free to run, and has a natural talent for front-end structure. But, like most AI models, it defaults to what I call AI slop. You know what I mean. You ask for a website, and you get that same purple gradient, the same interfont, the same rounded corners. It looks like a template from 2022. But recently, the team at Anthropic released something for their Claude Code CL, I called Skills. These are basically specialized markdown files that teach an AI exactly how to behave in a specific domain. One of them is called Front End Design. So, I had an idea. What happens if we take this Front End Design skill, which was technically written for Claude, and feed it into Gemini 3.0 Flash inside an environment like Verdant? Can we force this budget model to output production-grade, award-winning designs? Let's find out. First, let me explain what this skill actually is. I'm looking at the skill.md file right now. It is fascinating. It's not just a list of rules. It's a design philosophy. It explicitly tells the model to avoid generic AI slop aesthetics. It demands a bold aesthetic direction. It forces the model to choose a lane, whether that's brutalist, maximalist, or editorial, and stick to it. It bans generic fonts like Arial and Roboto. It forces the use of CSS variables for consistency and demands unexpected layouts and spatial composition. It basically allows you to lobotomize the boring corporate part of the AI and replace it with a high-end creative director. Now, let me show it to you in action. I'm going to use Verdant for this. If you haven't used Verdant, it's great for context injection. I've taken the raw text from the Anthropic front-end design skill and pasted it into my project's system instructions. I am going to ask Gemini 3.0 Flash to build my standard benchmark, the Movie Tracker app. Usually, when I do this with a Flash model, I get a list of movies in a table, maybe a search bar if I'm lucky. It works, but it's ugly. But this time, I'm going to type this prompt. Build a movie tracker using React and Tailwind. I want a dashboard to view trending movies. Use the front-end design skill to determine the aesthetic. I hit enter. And remember, this is Gemini Flash, so the speed is instantaneous. In literal seconds, it starts generating. And immediately, I can see a difference in the CSS. Watch what happens. It isn't importing the standard utilities. It's defining custom animations in the Tailwind config. It's setting up a color palette that isn't just blue 500 and gray 100. It's choosing a deep, noise-textured background with high-contrast typography. 
It created the files, and looking at the component structure, it's using what the skill calls intentional minimalism. Let's run this. Wow. Okay, this is kind of awesome. Instead of a boring grid, it has created a masonry layout. The font choice isn't the default. It's using a specific Google font import that looks editorial and sharp. There is a grain overlay on the images. The hover states aren't just changing opacity. There's a slight scale and a coordinate shift, giving it this tactile feel. It basically looks like something you'd see on Awards, not something a 0.30 model spit out. But it doesn't just stop there. The skill file has a section on motion. It says to prioritize one well-orchestrated page load. If I refresh the page, look at that entry animation. It's staggered. The header flies in from the top. The cards fade in with a delay. It feels expensive. And Gemini Flash did this without hallucinating the syntax, which is the surprising part. Now, let's try to push the aesthetic direction feature of the skill. I'm going to tell it. Change the aesthetic to cyberpunk industrial. Make it raw and utilitarian. Because Flash is so fast, I don't have to wait. It rewrites the CSS. Now, the borders are thick and neon. The rounded corners are gone. It's all sharp edges. It's using a monospace font for the headers. It actually implemented a glitch effect on the title using CSS keyframes. This is where it gets interesting. Gemini 3.0 Flash isn't smart enough to invent this design theory on its own. If you just ask for cyberpunk, it gives you generic purple and neon green. It offloads the creativity to the prompt and uses the model for pure coding speed. This combination, Gemini 3.0 Flash for the execution engine and the Claude front-end skill for the creative direction, is a cheat code. You are getting design work that rivals Opus or GPT-40, but you are paying a fraction of a penny for it, and it generates in half the time. However, I have to be real with you. There are limitations. As I mentioned in my previous benchmarks, Gemini 3.0 Flash can be hit or miss with complex logic. While the UI looks incredible, I noticed that when I asked it to implement a complex filtering system based on multiple criteria, it hallucinated a few array methods. It tried to use a library for the carousel that I didn't have installed. So, here is my verdict on the workflow. If you are building the visual layer of your application, the components, the animations, the layout, use Gemini 3.0 Flash with this front-end skill. It's unbeatable for the price. It iterates so fast that you can generate 20 variations in the time it takes Opus to write one. But when it comes time to wire up the database, handle the authentication state, or write the back-end logic, maybe switch over to Gemini 3 Pro or a smarter model. Flash is a designer, not a systems architect, which is pretty affordable if you think about it. You use the cheap model for the heavy lifting of CSS and JSX, and the expensive model only for the brain-melting logic. I think the Google products are really overlapping here, but this specific niche, using Flash as a high-speed UI generator, is a sweet spot that I don't think many people have found yet. And honestly, seeing a budget model adhere to strict design guidelines like avoid AI slop and commit to a cohesive aesthetic is really satisfying. It proves that the model's output quality is often just a reflection of the quality of your system prompt. So, yeah, grab that skill file from the description, throw it into Verdant or your IDE of choice, switch to Gemini 3.0 Flash, and just watch it build beautiful things. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.